This is the next video on the Control 101 MATLAB toolbox. And now we're going to look at frequency response compensator comparisons. Some background then. So the community has agreed on an outline structure for a Control 101 course. And the MATLAB toolbox has been developed specifically to support this course because what MATLAB does is it enables visualization and number crunching very, very efficiently so that students can focus on core concepts and basically understanding what is control, why is it important, and so on. This particular video focuses on some tools in the toolbox which look at frequency response compensator design. And in particular, we're going to focus on something here which you can see I have denoted criteria based design. That is, the designs are explicitly linked to the performance criteria which you, the user, give. Now, it's common in frequency response to use performance criteria or measures such as crossover frequencies or bandwidth. And here you can see two of the measures that we use quite often, so phase margin and the gain crossover frequency. And these are good indicators of closed loop performance. So it's quite common to base our performance criteria on these measures. So specifically then, what criteria are we going to use? So an obvious criteria is an overshoot or damping requirement, but that's not clear in a frequency response environment. So instead, we use phase margin as an equivalent requirement. Secondly, we're interested in rise time and bandwidth. And again, we don't know these explicitly because they're somewhat messy to calculate. So again, you see the word equivalently, we're going to use the gain crossover frequency as a measure of bandwidth. And finally, we're interested in low frequency gain or offsets to steps and ramps. So you'll see in total here, we've got three criteria which we're going to use to underpin our compensator design. Now, the previous videos have illustrated how you can do simple proportional lag lead and lead lag compensator design using these criteria. The proportional just use the phase margin criteria. The lag use the phase margin and offset criteria. The lead use the bandwidth and phase margin criteria. And the lead lag use all three criteria. We're not going to repeat the content of those previous videos because it's best that you just watch them. So again, the previous videos emphasized how you want to take a design in order to meet the criteria precisely. And the key point is, if you do that, there's no degrees of freedom left. The control parameters are defined precisely and explicitly. Now, the computations might not be analytic, not easy to do on pen and paper, but they are easy to automate with MATLAB tools. And so what we're going to do, the tools illustrated here allow the user to define the performance criteria only. You can define what gain crossover frequency do I want, what offset do I want, what phase margin do I want, and after that, the compensated designs are computed automatically because they follow directly from the criteria. So MATLAB will do all of that in the background so you can focus on, if I choose this criteria, what behavior do I get? And so forth. So we've got a few files and we'll start by looking at the live script file just to illustrate the automation. I'm not going to do it in any fine de detail, but just to show it's there if you want it. So what you can see, the first step in this live script, you define your system, and then you'll see with these three lines here, here are my criteria. What crossover frequency do I want? What phase margin do I want? What bandwidth do I want? Okay, so that's the step number one. So step number two, right, how do I do my proportional design to meet my phase margin? And here's the MATLAB code required to do it. You can see it's relatively straightforward. When I do my lag design, how do I meet the offset criteria? Here's the MATLAB code to do it. Again, you can see straightforward. When I do my lead design, here's the MATLAB code required to give you the required phase margin and the required bandwidth. And then finally, the lead lag design. So all the code is here so that you can read it and check 
um, how to do it if you want. And you'll find it's efficiently summarized in this file, which if you want the files, if you go down to the subsections, you'll see all the detailed code is provided for those who want it. OK, so what about the app? So the app hides the code and allows you to focus on doing the compare and contrast and see what's happening. So what is it that you can do? What you can do, so I put the wrong colour there, should we try blue? What you can do is you can choose what's in this green box. You can choose the phase margin, the bandwidth and the offset. And you'll notice that green box is done with green it, Basic, it's done in green, and then if you look over, oops, oh, oh dear, my pen's done something I didn't expect there. It's moved my picture, so I'll, I'll try and avoid using that pen. Um, you can see the green lines in these pictures, and these green lines correspond to what you've put in those specifications. Okay, so whenever you change these specifications you'll see these green dashed lines change so the idea is it's very visual you can see what specification have I set okay is it achievable is it sensible and so forth now if you look here you can see immediately the bandwidth specification is not very well set because if the phase margin is this dotted green line well I can achieve a much higher bandwidth so let's try a higher bandwidth let's go for something like four or maybe even five and you can see it's now looking a lot more sensible. There's a sensible bandwidth criteria that I can meet. There's a sensible phase margin criteria I can meet. And you'll see the offset criteria is down here at the bottom. Now, at the moment, I'm meeting all my criteria with my lead lag compensator. Everything's happy. Um, now, if you look in this orange box, it tells you what are the lead lag parameters that you've chosen. So the proportional. 1.09, that doesn't matter. The pole zero ratio of the lead component, 2.65, seems sensible. The pole zero ratio of the lag component is nearly one. So that tells you the lag component of the lead lag is doing almost nothing. So what does that say? That says that you can be more ambitious with this offset criteria. So why don't I make it 5%? So I've made it 5%, I've made it slightly more demanding. And now you can see the lag zero pole ratio has gone up to 2.25. I can be even more demanding if I want to. The key thing is it's very visual. You can see your criteria. You can see the impact on the compensators. And you can see whether your criteria are sensible. Are they realistic? Are they unrealistic? If you want to actually look at your compensators, you can see the lead lag has got lead pole zero here. The lag component pole zero here marked in red. If you just do lag, I've marked them in blue so you can see it's clearly different. And as expected, the lag pole and zero are to the left. Now, you can be more ambitious if you want to be. I could maybe make this offset criteria even more demanding. And now what do you see has happened? You'll see a warning message has appeared in this top plot. I've put it there just because that's where there's a space. It tells you the offset is not achievable by the lag. So the maximum pole zero ratio is 10. And what it's saying is with that pole zero ratio, I'm not able to meet the offset requirement. So if you look at this bottom right curve and look at the red curve, which is the lag, you'll see it doesn't quite get down to my specified offset. Now I can try a different system. Okay, when I press this system, you can see straight away I've got other error messages, offset not achievable by lag, bandwidth not achievable. I look at these green lines and I can see they're not in a sensible place compared to the bow diagrams and indeed I can see closed loop instability. Bottom line is my target bandwidth is clearly far too large. It needs to be back here somewhere. Okay, so somewhere around one. So let's bring it back to one. And now you can see everything looks a bit more sensible. So hopefully you get the idea of what this um, app will do for you. It visualizes the criteria and allows you to you know, compare and contrast what's happening with all these compensators um, and how you can modify criteria and get something achievable and then the price that you're paying to do that. So we've demonstrated how to run the criteria-based um, 
files in the Control 101 toolbox, and you can use these in lectures or for student private study to help students appreciate and apply their technical and analytical learning. The LiveScript file contains full NATLAB source code so that you can use that as templates for individual investigations, modifications and design beyond that that has been coded for you.